the previous lecture, we had started discussing on one of the very powerful methods in quantum mechanics in solving a second order differential equation. And since second order differential equations appear in many diverse areas of physics and engineering, this is a very powerful method for solving the a second order differential equation of the type d 2 psi by d x square plus k square of x psi of x is equal to 0, <coughs> where k square of x is an arbitrary function of x. However, we assume it to be a smoothly varying function of x, it does not change too much. How much is too much? We will quantify that statement as we go along the lecture. In my last lecture, I had said that when k square of x is independent of x, that is let us suppose k square of x is just k square, then the solutions are, then the solutions of this equation are simple exponentials e to the power of plus minus i k times x. This suggested that for psi of x, we try out a solution of the form of e to the power of i u of x. And we obtained a differential equation satisfied by u and if we neglected terms which are proportional to d 2 u by d x square and this is justified because when k square of x is constant u of x is just k x. So, u double prime is 0. Then we found that if we neglect this term then we found that u of x would be plus minus i integral k of x dx. And uh, therefore, the 0th order WKB solution which is psi of x the the 0th order WKB solution is given by a exponential e to the power of plus minus i integral k of x dx. Then we try to find out the equation that is rigorously satisfied by psi 0 of x and we found that this solution will be an accurate solution if 1 over k d k by d x modulus of that is less less than k. This is the condition, this is the condition for validity for validity of the j w k b solution of the j w k b solution. Now, we had also mentioned that in an inhomogeneous media, when we consider wave propagation in inhomogeneous medium, the, uh, the field associated with an electromagnetic wave satisfies this equation omega square by c square n square of x d x uh, sorry I am sorry multiplied by psi of x d x where n is the refractive index and omega by c is the free space wavelength omega by c is 2 pi by lambda naught. Now, therefore, k of x as you can see is just omega by c n of x and therefore, 1 over k d k by d x is just 1 over n d n by d x should be less less than the magnitude of this k is 2 pi by lambda 
the local diffractive index. And therefore, if I multiply both sides by lambda, I will get lambda d n by d x neglecting the factor of 2 pi is less than n. d n by d x is the rate of change of the refractive index multiplied by wavelength. That means, this quantity on the left hand side is the change in the refractive index in a distance of the order of the wavelength. So, therefore, this condition tells us that if the refractive index changes slowly, then my WKB solution is valid. The question is how slowly? The answer is that the change in the refractive index should be small in a distance of the order of this is delta n of x change in the refractive index in a distance of the order of the wavelength that should be small compared to the refractive index itself. And of course, in quantum mechanics problem k square is equal to 2 mu by h cross square e minus v of x. And obviously, even if v of x is slowly varying function, but let us suppose I am in a region where the potential energy is close to the total energy, then k square becomes 0. So, the left hand side becomes infinity. Points at which v of x becomes e, those are known as the turning points or rather classical turning points. We will discuss this little later as to why they are called turning points. But near the turning points, the k square itself becomes very small and so therefore, this inequality does not remain valid and the WKB solutions fail. So, this is this also we will discuss little later. Now, therefore, the first order the 0th order WKB solution the 0th order WKB solution is psi 0 of x is equal to a e to the power of plus minus i integral k of x dx. Now, we want to do better than this. So, let me assume that psi of x is some function times psi 0 of x, where psi 0 of x is given by this. And let me find out the differential equation that is satisfied by psi. So, you have psi d psi by d x or psi prime, this is equal to f prime psi 0 plus f psi 0 prime. So, if you differentiate psi 0 prime, so this will be plus minus i the differential of integral of k of x dx is just k times psi 0. So, psi 0 prime is equal to plus minus i k psi 0. So, this will be plus minus i k i k of x psi 0. So, I can write this down as f prime plus minus i k of x f of x psi 0 psi 0 of x. I differentiate this again. So, I get d 2 psi by d x square this is equal to if I differentiate this I get f double prime d 2 f by d x square plus minus i k prime of x f of x plus minus plus minus 
i k times f of x psi 0 of x plus the this quantity multiplied by psi 0 prime. So, that is plus minus i k times this. So, if I take the plus minus i k inside, so you get plus minus i k f prime, I am sorry here there should be an f prime because when I differentiated this I will get first k prime f plus k f prime. So, this is plus minus i k f prime and plus minus times plus minus is just plus i square is minus k square f psi 0. So, let me write down the let me combine these two terms and I will obtain and I will obtain. So, this term adds up with this term and this term if I take on this side. So, I get if I all right let me do it step by step d 2 psi by d x square and if I take this side this here. So, it will be plus k square f times psi 0 then this is equal to d 2 f by d x square and then plus minus i k prime f plus minus 2 i k f prime psi 0. Now, as we had assumed that psi of x is equal to f times psi 0. So, so this is psi. So, we obtain d 2 psi by d x square plus k square of psi and what I do is that in the first order de Bloukébé approximation I make this I neglect this term and I still have not chosen the f of x function and I take this equal to 0. So, the right hand side becomes 0. So, therefore, I choose we choose f of x such that plus minus i k prime f plus minus 2 i k f prime is equal to 0. So, so therefore, plus minus this cancels out. So, if I take this term on the right hand side, so I will get k 2 k d f by d x this is this term is equal to minus 2 k d f by d x will become minus k prime times f. So, I rewrite this if I divide this. So, I get 1 over f d f by d x is equal to minus 1 over 2 k times k prime that is d k by d x. So, if I integrate this, if I integrate this, I will obtain a very straightforward integration. So, you will get log of f is equal to, or if I take it on this side, so plus half log of k is a constant. is a constant. Half log k means log of k to the power of half. So, log a plus log b is log a b. So, log of f 
k to the power of half is a constant and therefore we obtain that f of x will be equal to constant times under root of k of x and so therefore the first order wkb solution is psi first order will be of x will be equal to a by under root of k x e to the power of plus minus i integral x k of x dx. Let me recapitulate that uh, let me recapitulate as to what we did. When k of x is slowly varying, we found that this is the 0th order WKB solution. Now, we said that we want to do better than this. So, so this is the 0th order WKB solution. So, we assumed for psi of x a solution of this type f of x plus psi 0 of x and remember that psi of x satisfies this equation d 2 psi by d x square plus k square psi is equal to 0. So, we substituted this solution in this equation. So, we first calculated at this stage we do not know what f of x is. We will in fact find out what f of x is. So, we calculated the first differential, we calculated the second differential and we found that d and this f times psi naught is psi. So, we obtained that this equation. So, d 2 psi by d x square plus k square f psi naught is equal to so much, but this is 0, the left hand side is 0. So, therefore, if once again, if we are able to solve this equation d 2 f by d x square plus minus i k prime f plus minus 2 i k f prime is equal to 0. If we are so able to solve this equation and then if we substitute it here, we will obtain a rigorously correct solution of the second order differential equation. Once again, if I am able to solve this equation exactly and obtain an f of x, substitute it here, then this will be a rigorously correct solution of the Schrodinger equation. We assume that f of x is a very slowly varying function, so that we neglect the term d 2 f by d x square and we choose f of x so that this term is equal to 0. So, you have plus minus i k prime f plus minus 2 i k f prime is equal to 0. We solve this equation and we find that f of x comes out to be constant times under root of k of x. So, we finally obtain this as the first order JWKB solutions. These are the first order JWKB solutions. In fact, in all everywhere the second order is so difficult that everywhere one uses only this type of solutions. These are known as therefore, the JWKB solutions. Now, we had assumed k square of x to be positive. Let us suppose if k square of x is negative, we have an equation like this minus 
kappa square of x psi of x equal to 0. If we have an equation like this, we can again solve it in exactly similar manner and we will obtain the WKB solution as constant say say a by square root of kappa x. But since there is a minus sign here, instead of i k x, it will be plus or minus integral kappa d x. Either it will be an exponentially amplifying solution or it will be an exponentially decaying solution. These solutions are oscillatory solution, are solutions in terms of sine and cosine. As you all know that if d2 psi by dx square, if the constant is positive, then the solutions are either I can write it as sin kx or cos kx, sin kx or cos kx or I can write it in terms of plus minus i kx. So, these are the oscillatory JWKB solutions. On the other hand, if, if, if I have an equation of this type d2 psi by dx square minus kappa square psi of x is equal to 0, then it has two solutions. One is e to the power of plus kappa times x if kappa is a constant which is an exponentially amplifying solution as x goes to infinity and e to the power of minus kappa x which is an. So, you must remember that e to the power of plus kappa x is exponentially amplifying solution as x goes to infinity and e to the power of minus kappa x is an exponentially decaying solution as x goes to infinity. However, if x goes to minus infinity, if x goes to minus infinity, then exponential plus kappa x is a is an exponentially decaying solution solution as x goes to minus infinity. Similarly, e to the power of minus kappa x is an exponentially amplifying solution as x goes to minus infinity. Both are exponential solutions whereas, whereas when k square of x is positive you have what are known as oscillatory solutions. So, these are the complete uh, JWKB solutions. The question is how do we use, use them. Now, let me consider a simple problem that the linear harmonic oscillator problem, the linear harmonic oscillator problem and you have for the linear harmonic oscillator V of x is equal to half mu omega square x square. Now, therefore, Schrodinger equation is d 2 psi by d x square plus 2 mu by h cross square e minus v of x. So, in this particular case it is so much so half mu omega square x square psi of x is equal to 0. <coughs> so, my k square of x is given by this k square of x is equal to 2 mu e by h cross square minus mu square omega square by h cross square x square. So, therefore, if I plot this, so, so my so my k square of x, let me rewrite it, is equal to 2 mu by h cross square e minus half mu 
omega square x square. Now, let us suppose E is positive, then how will this function look like? If you plot this, then it will be an inverted parabola, it will be an inverted parabola. So, at x is equal to 0, k square of I am plotting k square of x as a function of x. So, at x is equal to 0, it has a positive value equal to 2 mu e by h cross square. So, this is 2 mu e by h cross square. Then at 2 points, then it starts decreasing with x and these are known as the turning points where k square of x is 0. So, let us suppose a this point is a this is x is equal to b as you can immediately find out that a is equal to minus of under root of 2 e 2 e by mu omega square and b is equal to plus under root of 2 e by mu omega square. These are known as the turning points because in a classical oscillator, let us suppose I have a classical a simple pendulum which is oscillating like this. Now, now, let us suppose that the maximum amplitude of the classical oscillator is x naught. So, at this point the kinetic energy is, so let us suppose x, the vibrations are x is equal to x naught cos omega t. So, my d 2 x by d t square, this is the d 2 x by d t square is equal to minus omega square of x and d x by d t, d x by d t is equal to if I differentiate that is minus omega omega uh, sorry minus omega x naught sin omega t. So, the kinetic energy the the let me write this again that x is equal to x naught cos omega t and therefore, the velocity d x by d t is equal to minus omega x naught sin omega t. So, therefore, it is kinetic energy is equal to half mu d velocity square omega square x naught square sin square omega t and the potential energy is half mu omega square x square. So, that is x naught square cos square omega t. So, the total energy is equal to half mu omega square x naught square. So, as we all know that if a particle of mass m of mass mu is making a simple harmonic motion, then at the point x naught the kinetic energy is 0 and it turns back. So, this point x naught which is equal to plus minus under root of 2 e by mu omega square where e is the total energy of the oscillator which is independent of time e is kinetic energy plus potential energy and that is half mu omega square x naught square. So, x naught is the point where the kinetic energy is 0 the total energy is potential and therefore, it turns back. So, therefore, the point plus x naught and minus x naught are known as the turning points of the oscillator.
where the kinetic energy e becomes 0 and therefore, the particle turns back. Let us suppose I have a particle, uh, I have a tennis ball which is climbing up the hill. Now, if what will happen is that the, the if you roll the tennis ball, it goes up and then it turns back. At this point, the kinetic energy becomes 0. So, here also the classical oscillator when it reaches the maximum displacement point, the, the, the kinetic energy is 0 and the particle turns back. So, these x naught is equal to plus minus 2 u by mu sorry mu omega square 2 e by mu omega square are known as the classical turning points. So, in this figure in this diagram you can see that at the point at x is equal to a and at x is equal to b k square of x is 0 at the turning points at, at x is equal to a and at x is equal to b. Now, I have the condition for the validity of the of the of the uh, w k b so j w k b solution is 1 over k d k by d x the modulus of that it should be less less than k. So, around these regions where k is 0 this condition is not satisfied. So, we have the w k b solutions in this region, we can have w k b solutions in this region and we can have w k b solutions in this region, but not near the turning points and therefore, how do we use these solutions. So, let me let me uh, discuss this once point once again that let me draw this potential energy distribution and let us suppose it is something like this. So, I plot k square of x and you have like this. These are the two turning points. At the turning points at x is equal to a and at x is equal to b k square of x is 0. These are known as the these are known as the turning points turning points. So, my w k b solution is valid here w k b solution is valid here w k b solution is valid here, but not in this region not in this region w k b solutions are not valid. So, if I know the solution in this region how do I go here or if I know the solution in this region how do I go here or if I know the solution here how do I go here. These are done through the what are known as the connection formulae what are known as the connection formulae and we will discuss the first of all we will state what are the connection formulae, use them in solving problems and maybe at the end of this lecture uh, the next lecture may be when we finish j w k b approximation we, uh, we will give a, the, the theory behind the connection formulae. First of all let us suppose that let me write down the solution in this region. Here x is greater than b, but k square of x is negative. So, my solutions are exponential solutions and we can write the exponential solutions as 1 over root k e to the power of minus b to x kappa d x. This is an exponentially decaying solution. This is an exponentially decaying solution, because 
if kappa were constant then the upper limit is x. So, this will be e to the power of minus kappa x minus b and as x tends to infinity this will be an exponentially decaying solutions. So, similarly 1 over root kappa e to the power of plus integral b to x kappa dx is an exponentially amplifying solution because if kappa was a constant if I take it out of the integral so this becomes kappa x minus b. Now these are the JWKB solutions in region 3 far away from this turning point. Let us consider region 1 the solutions are 1 over root k. Now, here x is less than a. So, I write this down solutions as e to the power of x to a say plus kappa dx. Now, you see that if kappa was a constant then this will be e to the power of plus kappa a minus x and as x goes to minus infinity this becomes an exponentially amplifying solution. Similarly 1 over root kappa exponential minus here x is less than a kappa dx here if I take kappa to be a constant so you will have e to the power of minus kappa a minus x so this will be e to the power of plus kappa x so this is a as x goes to minus infinity this becomes an exponentially decaying solution. Now, let me first mention that uh, you have here when k square of x is positive the two independent solutions are a by say a by root k e to the power of i integral a k dx plus and minus the two independent solutions are under root of k e to the power of minus i x k dx. I can take any linear combination also for example in when k square is constant I can write the solution as e to the power of i k x and e to the power of minus i k x or I can write down this as sin k x and cos k x that is also a well behaved solution that is also a legitimate solution. So, I can write this down as a by root kappa say a 1 by root kappa say a k root k sorry sin of integral say a x k d x plus say phi some phase factor and the other independent solution I can take as a 2 by root k cos of integral x, x can be at the top or at the bottom it does not really matter we will see k d x plus phi. So, the general solution is the sum of this. So, this is the general J W K B solution. So, let us consider the connection formula when the exponential solutions are to the left 
and oscillatory solutions are to the right. So, let us suppose there is a turning point at A, there is a turning point at x is equal to A, this is my x, x and this is k square of x, k square of x passes through 0, it is positive on the right side. So, here you have exponent uh, oscillatory solutions, here there is exponential solution. So, the connection formulae, connection formulae are 1 over root k exponential minus x to a because in this region this is the third this is the first region let us suppose for x less than a x is less than a so kappa of x dx this goes over to there is a factor of 2 there 2 by root k sin of integral a to x k of x dx let me just write it down as k dx plus pi by 4. So, this is the solution exponentially decaying solution in region 1 far away from the turning point. This is this oscillatory solution to the right far away to the right of the turning point x is equal to a. Similarly, an exponentially amplifying solution. So, this is under root of k, these you must remember, I remember them. So, you must also remember them x to a chi kappa of x dx. Once you remember the connection formula, then the use of the w k b approximation is really extremely simple and very elegant and this goes over to 1 over root k, it is a cos function cos a to x k of x dx k of x dx plus pi by 4. So, this is the this is the exponentially decaying solution and this is the exponentially amplifying solution to the left of the turning point. I have drawn a picture let me show that to you. So, you have a turning point at x is equal to a. Now, near the turning point the j w k b solutions are not valid. So, little beyond little on the right of the turning point where k square of x is positive you have trigonometric or sinusoidal j w k b solutions beyond a certain distance to the left of the turning point you have exponential j w k b solutions. This is the variation that I have assumed which is a smoothly varying function, but it passes through 0 at x is equal to a and these are the two connection formulae. If you have an exponentially decaying solution here, it will go over to the sine function plus pi by 4 this phase is important. On the other hand if there is an exponentially amplifying solution here, because if kappa was re constant then this would be e to the power of minus kappa x and as x tends to minus infinity this will be an exponentially amplifying solution. So, this the solution on the left is exponentially decaying solution and the solution to the left is an exponentially amplifying solution and that is equal to 
1 over root k that goes over to this. I have not given you the proof of the connection formula. I hope to give you the proof at the end of the next lecture, but right now you take it for granted. So, once again you do not know the solution near this part, you do not know the solution in this part, you only know the solution far to the left of the turning point. So, these are the solution, the, these are the solutions and these are the solutions far to the right of the turning. What happens if I have a k square of x variation in which there are variations like this. So, that let us suppose this is a turning point and you have oscillatory solutions here because k square of x is positive here. K k square of x is positive here and k square of x is negative here. So, here these are exponential solution and here there are oscillatory solutions. So, here we will write like this in this region we will write 2 by root k 2 by root k sin of please see the limits now x is now less than b. So, it is x to b k d x k of x d x plus pi by 4 this goes over to the exponentially decaying solution. So, this is 1 over root k exponential minus integral b to x kappa d x. This is the exponentially decaying solution and the cos term 1 over root k cos integral x to b k d x plus pi by 4. this goes over to 1 over root k exponential plus b to x kappa d x. This is an exponentially amplifying solution. So, I have here the, so here I have shown this again the turning point here I have shown as A does not matter. So, what I have tried to show here is that in this region near the point x is equal to A k square of x is 0. So, in this region k square is small and so therefore, the J w k b solutions are not valid. In this region k square of x is less than 0, so you have exponential solutions. In this region k square of x is positive, so you have exponential solutions, I am sorry sinusoidal solutions. So, what are the connection formula? What solution will go over to an exponentially decaying solution and what solution on the left will go over? to an exponentially amplifying solution and I am just giving you the answer without proof. Hopefully, I will give you the proof later and the answer is that 2 by root k x sin x 2 a k d x plus pi by 4 goes over to an exponentially decaying solution. This I had written down in the previous slide also and this the 1 over root k if you have a term like this then this will go to an exponentially amplifying solution ok. Now, let us let us solve a problem, let us solve a problem. Let me consider the linear harmonic oscillator problem which we have been doing a large number of times the linear harmonic oscillator. So, you have linear harmonic oscillator type, so you have a k square of x variation which is something like this as I had discussed. 
So, it has two turning points at x is equal to a and at x is equal to b. Now, I want to find out the eigenvalues of the problem. Eigenvalues correspond to the bound states. That means, that means d 2 psi by d x square plus 2 mu by h cross square e minus v of x, I am solving this problem. So, the boundary conditions are that x must go to 0 as x tends to infinity and as x tends to minus infinity. So, I must start, I must have an exponentially decaying solution here and I must have an exponentially decaying solution here. So, the trick is that in region 1 that is x less than a, I start with an exponentially decaying solution here. I then go over to this region and then I look towards this turning point and go over to this region and find the coefficient of the exponentially amplifying solution and that we must set equal to 0. Let me do this. So, for x less than a if you want to have an exponentially decaying solution, then the solution is 1 over root kappa as we discussed later just a few minutes back minus x 2 a kappa d x. This is the exponentially decaying solution in region 1, exponentially decaying solution in region 1. Now, I write this solution. It goes over to in the region 2 in this region far away from the turning point to 2 by root k sin of a to x k of x d x plus pi by 4. So, I have started with an exponentially decaying solution here and using the connection formulae, I have been able to get a solution here. Now, I want to get a solution in this region. So, for that if this is let us suppose the point B then I must write the solution in terms of x 2 a or the, this turning point x 2 b k d x plus pi by 4. The argument has to be like this, then and then only I can hop over this turning point and go to this side. So, let me tell you, so instead of this I must have an expression like x 2 b k d x plus pi by 4. So, it will become clear in a moment. So, on the in the second region my solution is 2 by root k sin of phi, where phi is equal to integral a 2 x k of x d x plus pi by 4. So, so, a point is here and b point is here. So, I want to now write the integral in terms of x to b k d x plus pi by 4. So, what I do is I write this down as a to b k of x d x plus pi by 4 and then I write minus x to b k d x plus pi by 4 
I have added a term minus pi by 4. So, this I add pi by 4 here. So, what I have done is I have written integral a to x as a to b minus x to b. So, this becomes let me put this is equal to theta. So, this becomes theta plus pi by 2 pi by 4 plus pi by 4 minus integral x to b k of x dx plus pi by 4. So, if I take the sin phi, if I take sin of this thing, sin of pi by 2 plus alpha is cos alpha. So, I will get 2 by root k this term, please see this 2 by root k cos of theta minus this whole quantity x to b k of x dx plus pi by 4. Okay. So, now I will write this as cos a cos b plus sin a sin b. We will continue from this point onwards in our next lecture. Thank you.